Christina, I am so glad that you are here on the show today. If you would take a minute and just introduce yourself, tell us about your family and a little about your homeschool. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, so I'm Christina. I'm a mom of five. I'm married to my amazing husband, Seth, who I'm so thankful for him. I don't know what we would do without him. But I have a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 15-year-old. So quite a wide range. Um, we live in upstate New York. So it is just starting to get like nice outside and springtime. And thank goodness, because the kids are able to get out of the house. <laughs> so we've been cooped up quite a bit. However, it does also come with the seasonal allergies. So there's that. But yeah, um, homeschooling, we started a little over three years ago. So we started during COVID. Um, and so I am always hesitant to say this, but I'm very thankful for COVID in that regard, um, because it was definitely like an eye-opening time for our family. So, yeah. And what kind of style of homeschooling or how would you describe your, your approach to homeschooling? So I have a really hard time with this one, but I would say like wild and free because we kind of do our own thing. Um, I would say we are very Charlotte Mason inspired and then really eclectic, which I feel like is such an umbrella term, right? Because there's such a wide range of what could fall under that and what people even think that is. Um, but we are really inspired by good books and nature. Um, we're very gospel centered, even just as a family, you know, it's just a big priority for us to be really focused on like discipling our children well and working out our own salvation <laughs> in front of our children, which can be sanctifying and humbling and convicting and all of those things at the same time. So yeah, I mean, all that stuff carries over right into our homeschool because that's just kind of our family culture. So I love how unique each homeschool can be just as unique as each individual family. Uh, my friend Pam Barnhill calls it us schooling, which I kind of like, you know, sometimes it's hard to find just the right label for your particular family's approach to homeschooling. So I think, you know, us schooling, we're doing it our way. It's kind of a yes. fun way to think. Yeah. And I feel like it's different depending on the season. Like I'll notice we'll get into kind of like a mode where we are outside a lot, going on adventures, doing a lot of nature study. And then there'll be seasons where we're more into literature. And so it flows and changes. I feel like with the natural seasons, because we do get a true four seasons here, in New York, and then also just like life seasons, you know? Yeah. So definitely. there's some constants, right? And then there's some things that ebb and flow we do more or less of depending on what's going on. And that flexibility, that ability to flow is definitely a gift of homeschooling. Do you have any other favorite parts of homeschooling? So other than freedom and flexibility, definitely the time together. Like I realized when COVID happened and we were all together, like how much I was missing and how much, you know, I realized like we need to make some changes. I didn't necessarily know right away that it was homeschooling, but it had been bothering me for years that I wasn't with my kids more. And for whatever reason, it just never clicked of like, well, you could be, right? Like you could, that actually is a choice, but I think it's just, it never even cross my mind as a choice. So I'm thankful that, you know, now we get that time together, like redeeming back the time that I feel like I kind of lost with my two older boys who were in school for years. And then also like just really soaking up the time with my younger three who have been home, you know. And it probably makes you appreciate those moments you have now with your older kiddos because you know how precious it really is. Yeah. 15 is like, I'm starting to be like, oh, okay. Like you're 15. You're going to be 16 this year. Yeah. It starts getting real. My oldest is graduating from our homeschool this spring and it's simultaneously wonderful and exciting and also like a little bit sad, you know, it's kind of yeah. like something you're, you're saying goodbye to a season. So I guess maybe not sad, right. but you're saying goodbye to a certain yeah. time and season. And, and that's, that's hard a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think probably bittersweet, right? Like it's, Definitely. it's probably beautiful to see like the fruit of your labor after all of these years, but then also like, oh, I don't want to let go of it either. 
you know? Yeah. It definitely makes me appreciate the time I'm having now with my younger kids for sure. Right. Well, Christina, you and I are both a part, as everyone in this episode is, we're part of the team at Made to Homeschool. What are you excited about the Made to Homeschool community? I'm excited about so much of it, but I think the connection between moms, not just through like the contributors, but the contributors with the members that will join the community and even people that have been following us on other platforms, whether it be like a podcast or YouTube or Instagram, just being able to connect more, like in a more organic way, as opposed to just like a comment and an answer or response, like really being able to come together as moms, it feels more like a real community. So I'm really excited about that. And I like that it's not just one voice that we'll be hearing. Like, it's not just the one person that like, well, I guess I'm in this, I've paid for this community. I just hear this one person. There's such a wealth of wisdom and a plethora of experiences and perspectives to be able to come one place and hear from all of all of these amazing moms. I'm so excited to get to know each of you better and to learn. I think we can learn a lot from one another. We can learn just as much from people who homeschool differently than we do sometimes yes. as we can from people who homeschool in the same way. Like I, we're just, I'm very excited too. <laughs> it's true. It really is true because I find that I'm really inspired, not only by people who inspire me because they are living out the type of homeschool style that I enjoy or that feels natural to me. But also when I, when I, like I follow a mom on YouTube, one of my favorite moms that I watch, she is totally different than me in homeschool style. She is much more organized and scheduled and structured. And it's, it's entirely different. Not that I don't have a structure that we don't have a rhythm, but it is very different and I am really like encouraged, inspired by her too. And sometimes it'll challenge me. You know what? Like this might be an area that I want to grow a little bit more in, in a different way, you know, and just like really honoring what you said earlier about how it is us schooling, like being able to honor the fact that her way isn't the right way. Her way works for her family. And there might be things that I can learn for it from it. And my way isn't the right way, but it's also not the wrong way just because it's not her way. You know, and that maybe there are some things that we've actually had a chance to connect on Instagram before. And she said, I love how creative you are and free spirited you are. And I was really encouraged that she said that because sometimes you can almost feel judged and it's not even real, right? Like I would think that she would think like, oh my gosh, like she needs to get her act together, you know? And she was like, no, I'm so inspired by you. That's just not my personality. Like it just, it doesn't come natural for me. So it is really cool to be able to have a place where we can be doing that with each other all the time, you know, yeah. like learning from each other and inspiring one another. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Well, here at the end, Christina, I'm going to ask you the questions that I love to ask all of my podcast guests. And the first is just, what are you personally reading these days? <sighs> I... I'm not, I should have had it next to me because I have a stack. I'm not even exaggerating. It is this high and it has ones that I've started and that ones that I'm like, I'm going to start because I am like a chronic, like not finisher of books before I start new ones. So the list is really long, but I can say that I just finished Mere Motherhood, which I really, really loved. Um, there was like one thing that I didn't agree with, but it was like a growing thing for me because I'm like, it's okay to love something and not agree with everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then every month I read the monthly, like leading up to the month, I lead the, read the monthly chapter from Sally Clarkson's A Life-Giving Home. And I'll add one more because I'm really loving it. And that's um, Modern Miss Mason. I'm really, really loving that. And I love her approach to talking about the Charlotte Mason style of homeschooling because I am super inspired about it inspired by it mm -hmm. um but I'm not like rigid really in any kind of method because I just feel like why um and she really does such a beautiful job as someone who is super knowledgeable in that philosophy but she does a beautiful job of saying like like it's really about how it fits into your homeschool not like how you can fit into it and so it's been really encouraging and inspiring and I just got to see her speak at the wild and free conference a couple weeks ago and that was like 
I got to hug her. <laughs> so, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I haven't yeah. gotten to hug her, but I did have <laughs> Leah on the podcast uh, up in the previous oh. seasons. So that was really fun. And Cindy Rollins as well, who's the author oh, wow. of Mere Motherhood. So it's really that's great awesome. to get to learn from those amazing ladies. Yeah. yeah. So much wisdom. Yeah. Well, Christina, the final question is, what is your best tip for helping the homeschool day run more smoothly? I would say being flexible. I feel like it's a cliche answer, but like, it's also finding the balance. Like, where do I just kind of like let go and be flexible and go with what seems like is making sense for the day? And where do I need to maybe push back a little bit and say, okay, like this is an area where we do need to like be a little bit more diligent, be a little bit more um, focused or push through a little bit more. And so I'm still learning that every day, like up until this very moment of this very day of like figuring out those times where I'm like, okay, like just let it go and trust the process. And other times where I'm like, no, I need to reel it in, you know? So I would say like, just finding that balance that it can't just be completely a free for all, right? But not feeling like you have to hold the rein so tight that like you're exhausted, they're miserable, and it's just not working anyway, you know? Yeah, totally. Well, Christina, this has been great. Thank you for chatting with us today. Can you tell us where to find you all around the internet? Yes. So rooted underscore home life on Instagram and rooted home life on YouTube. And I do have a little Etsy shop where I have some of the resources that I create for mostly teaching multiple children. So multiple ages. So resources that can be kind of unit study style. So I always create it for my family. So I try it out. We're like the guinea pigs. And then I just put the things up there. It's just a little fun thing um, okay. that I share with other moms. So, And of course, as always, all these links will be on the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much, Christina, and I look forward to seeing you in Made to Homeschool. Thank you, Amy.